Quick tips on colours and starting portraits again. Um, you can use, or well, you can use any colours you like, but the colours that I often start with are magenta, um, which is a quinacridone pigment. You don't have to use that, you could use cadmium red, you could use alizarin if you wanted. Uh, they'd all give you slightly different colours, but you know, a red uh, to start off with. And I like quinacridone magenta because it's really versatile. Um, I've got titanium white, or you could use unbleached titanium. Um, this is actually yellow oxide, uh, Liquitex, which is why it's running down the palette. It's a softer body, but you could use yellow ochre, it's almost identical. Uh, you could use uh, a bright yellow, but it, they're quite, it's quite hard to hide it in a colour mix sometimes. So um, I would try and go for, um, if you're going to use a yellow, more of an orangey yellow. Um, uh, or certainly a, a raw sienna, perhaps, but yellow ochre. Um, or yellow oxide is great. And then ultramarine uh, blue, alternative blues, um, not sure really, I think that's probably the best um, because it is, um, it's so dark really. I suppose you could use thalo blue, that can be a bit greeny. Uh, or cobalt maybe, it's sometimes a bit light, but so if you've got ultramarine that's perfect. Um, I've also got a dark here, this is actually a Liquitex colour. Um, which is muted grey, I think it's called, but um, I, I wouldn't recommend that necessarily. I haven't actually got the colour I'd recommend, which would be Van Dyke Brown or um, Raw Umber as a dark colour, but you can mix a dark using the blue. Uh, to start off with a portrait mix, start off getting an orange. Um, if I mix these two colours together, you can see it gives me an orange that's more pinky. So I will add more of the yellow ochre to create more of an even orange, but take a look at your subject. They might be more pinky, more yellowy. Uh, and then to soften that color, so it's not quite as bright, a tiny weeny bit of ultramarine. And then if I add some white, then we can see that that's beginning to make uh, a fairly convincing pale portrait mix. If you want that to remain darker, don't add the white. If you want that to be more grey, add the blue. If you want that to be more pink, add the pink. More yellow, add the yellow. So really you're just constantly adjusting these four colours. So what might be useful in terms of uh, palette work, I mean I, I do recommend actually buying colours as close as possible to the ones that you want. So you can get colours that are very much like this burnt, uh, Sienna with a little bit of white, very similar, and uh, the Amsterdam range, do Naples Yellow Red, which is more of a pinky version of this. It's a bit light, but um, you could use that, but you could just go from your basics. But mix a portrait mix that's roughly the main colour of your subject, so let's say they're a bit pinky, and then think about what you're going to use as your darks. So you could have purples as your darks. But in this case, I'm going to use this grey purple, uh, this muted grey. Um, or you could just simply make this again, but just have more of the blue in there. But um, there we go, that gives you a dark. So you see the effect of the blue on those three colours. So it's just really balancing those three. So what I would have on a palette is I'd have that main colour. I'd have all of the component colours as well, so I can make adjustments as I go, and I'd have something that's going to give me my darks. So the darks typically being things like the pupil, perhaps some really dark, cool shadows as well. Then go for the biggest brush that you can. This is already, I've painted this already, but I've just done this in three values, a dark and a medium and a light, and I used uh, the, this same colour here, the muted grey, I use burnt sienna and I use white. So this was just an exercise um, from the video. Um, and so then what I would start off with, I and mean, it might be a nice idea to do a tonal underpaint, but at least sketch out where your tones change, your darks and your mediums and your lights. Then with the largest brush that you can get away with, this may be a little large, but start off, um, where you start is up to you really. Some people like to start with their darkests because um, it just informs the colour and they're easier to see, uh, vice versa with the lights. I'm going to start with the mid value, but the important thing with acrylics is that you start, see how close that is to burnt sienna, that you start in one area and don't move around the canvas 
with colour. Just get uh, work on one area until you're happy. So I'm just going to add a little bit more pink to that. So look, this is a great thing with acrylics. You can mix on the canvas. Uh, I'll, I will also find myself mixing on my palette as I go as well. But I think it's easier to mix uh, on the canvas because you put the colour on there and then you think, okay, does that work? Is that too light? Is that too dark? You've got context rather than fussing about the, the correct colour on the palette. And think about your brush strokes being in lots of different directions, be exciting. Let's use this dark underneath here. Um, think about contouring, but also what's important about this technique is, as you can see, I'm backwards and forwards to my palette constantly um, because I want to keep changing colours to make this look as varied as possible because I'm going for sort of an interpretive um, uh, uh, sort of painting. Um, so I'm constantly making sure that it changes, but also the landscape of the face is varied. So just by doing one colour in large areas is never really going to work. I hope that helps.